Folks, today in Crossing South, we get to see some really cool amphibious planes being produced in Baja. Coming to you now! You know, manufacturing is a big part of the region here in Tijuana. Uh, this is just one of many plants that have brought their operation uh, to this city for uh, assembly, for production. And the company we're in right now is called Icon. And they're, they're very particular. It's a very uh, interesting product that they make in, in this plant. And the person that's going to give us a tour of what's going on here, the operation, is standing right next to me. Kevin, my man. How you doing? Right. <laughs> Production right. manager, right? That's right. Okay, he's the man, and he's going to show us how, how things are done. Let's All go. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> this plant produces a really cool plane called the A5. Most small planes need an airport, but this thing can actually make its landing on land or water. They expanded a lot of their manufacturing to Tijuana, and so we wanted to check it out. Being such a cool thing to make, we wanted to see the ins and outs of this leisure air land water vehicle. Manufacturing in, in Baja and Tijuana is super important. It's, it's very, there's so many companies, international companies manufacturing here. How, how has the workforce been? I mean, the, the Mexican workforce, you know, how, how have they been in, in regards to this type of work? So this type of work is fairly new. Um, once we came over into Mexico, uh, we had a very intense or robust training that we took all of the employees through for laminating and bonding. Okay. Uh, for the painting portion was more on the job um, because we feel more comfortable with the painters touching the part, understanding okay. the complexity of it because it's very complex to complete. So you uh, need to learn painting. it so on the job. So you need to learn it on the job. Wow. Um, but we, we bring people in, we take them through a training for three weeks up to a month. Um, before we let them out on the production floor. Oh, wow. But they're still not manufacturing parts yet. Uh, we go through a core exercise, we go through the detailing exercise uh, in order for the, the, the employee or the new employee to get comfortable laminating the part. So phase one, your new entries are doing laminating. That's correct. Right, that's correct. But you do have manufacturing side We here? do have manufacturing side Th here. Those are employees that have gone to the next level. That's correct. So we have AMP guys here uh, that's helped building the final result of the aircraft. Uh, we have bonding techs that also specialize in the closing of parts. So, for example, we have a fuselage that we actually bond together, two skins. Oh, really? Uh, that we mate together. So if I understood the process correctly, it's comprised of multiple steps, but the first step is just as important as the last one. This is the lamination part. So this is our first process of laminating. Then so explain to me what that is though, laminating. So what laminating is we take a, a material, Yeah. Uh, we take this material and form parts. Uh, once we form the parts, we then take it into the oven for cure. Uh, after it's cured... You, it, you put it in an oven, uh -huh. heat it up, and then leave it for curing. Correct. And then once that's done, it's detooled. Uh, once detool is complete, then we have a trim and drill process. So it's a very broad process that we go through to creating a part. This is the first phase of creating a part. Gotcha. This is phase one, the most Is this a panel, portion. a wing, what is this? This is actually an aileron. So the aileron is just the functionality uh, for the wings. They have support the wings. It's within? Uh -huh. Okay, gotcha. The laminating portion, is very complex, although it's also simple. Right. Um, is it a part? Is it, is it a thing where you want employees to go through that process that way when they're doing the the um, the assembly part? They already know what the guys behind went through and how to do the work that was the baseline. You know, by the time it gets to them, right? I mean, they know how to do all that already. Right? That's correct. So we set a, a standard, right? right? So that standard coming in, uh, we have work centers, work center A, work center B, work center C. Okay. Uh, each one of the employees go through each one of those work centers. So we're trying to create more of a cross-functional team opposed to a uh, set standard. Right, where this one department, just one just, department that's, this is only my responsibility. No, that's, that's correct. you know how to do everything, the whole process, right? That's correct. So for yeah. example, this area right here is uh, the fuselage skin. So the largest skins right now, we, we completed skins through one 
81. This is the fuselage skin? This is a spar. The main spar is the, the most important part of the aircraft because it's structurally sound to support uh, the installation of the wings. So okay. that, this is the main portion. Uh, and then there's the MA-11, which is another portion of it, which I'll explain on the other okay. side. Um, <laughs> but a spar, but where a, does that go? But the spar is more uh, the center wing. Uh, it's the upper portion of our aircraft. Okay. And it's super complex. Oh, the wing is on, it's so the on the top, behind. right? Yeah, I got uh -huh. you. So this centered, would uh -huh. it be? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this would be over the fuselage? That is correct. Right. So that's an important part. That's so a, what that's are they doing? Part. Are they doing? They're actually trying to finish up laminating this. So uh, this process requires them to use uh, tools of measurement. Uh, they're making sure that they're applying the lamin is laminate. Is laminating functional or is it aesthetic? What is what are, what are they it's doing? It's functional. It's functional. It's so functional. what is it? What does that so do? So it's plies. It's one ply at a time. It's one piece of laminate. The whole thing? thing? The whole thing. No way. Yes. So in order to properly laminate the parts, the workers have to use these molds. It's very tedious. Imagine layer after layer. It reminds me of the same mechanics of a 3D printer, but done by human hands. So these splash molds we use for several different things. So it, it just helps us locate hole sizes. I mean, we identify everything. Um, and, and our laminating team, once they get the instruction from planning, uh, we take this piece over to the laminating shop and that's when the magic begins. So th is this the mold of something that they have to basically build laminating? Correct. So, so you have to duplicate this from scratch? From scratch. Wow. Is this just, is this a laminated piece or is this just a mold? That's a mold for the laminated okay, piece. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. In this area alone, just to complete a fuselage, is 368 parts that are laminated uh, to complete one full aircraft. You guys got a big operation for what seems to be a leisure product. <laughs> How many people are buying these planes, man? <laughs> uh, our sales are really, really good, so a lot of people are really, really buying. Wow. Uh, like this year, we're completely sold out. So probably not only the US, right? You're probably selling around the world. Not yet, but not we're, yet? Oh, we're, we're really? going international. So this is only US? This is, only this is US a huge right market for this. Yeah. It's a, is it a hydro plane, or what would you call it? No, it's an amphibious. Amphibious plane, yeah. So the next area I see is the trimming of the fuselage skins. I have to say, I don't see an aircraft yet. It took some imagination, but you got to trust the process, right? That is one of our fuselage skins. We actually hand trim. That's the fuselage skin? Yeah. Really? So we have a scribe line. Okay. Uh, that he comes and he trims based off of that scribe line. So he's actually cutting this line. Oh, so wow. when we when we do the bonding process, everything mates appropriately. He'll go through it and trim all of the edges uh, to the scribe line, and then that's when we pass it over to inspection. Is this the actual skin of the plane? That is the actual skin of the aircraft. Well, what material is that? This is the same material that we use over in the lab. The laminated. The laminated. Yeah. Kidding. Yeah. But is it more layered or? It's way more layered. Way, way more, more layered. layered. Okay. More, yeah. A lot denser. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And this is this is really time consuming. Uh, right now we're getting through it in about four days to laminate a skin. What is the core, you know, ingredient? What is the material? What is it? So this is 100% carbon fiber. Gotcha. Amazing. Amazing how, you know, even products like the, the core materials have come a long way, right? I mean, because at the beginning planes were made of what? Aluminum. Oh, right? Aluminum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is more structurally sound than aluminum. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that part was the trimming and the drilling. Next up are the sub-assemblies where the majority of the parts will be prepared to be installed into the aircraft. This is where the parts begin to look like something that resembles an actual plane. So majority of our parts has to come to sub-assembly before we install it in final. And here, like we have two engines that's in the process of subbing. This is the engine? This is the engine. So I wonder like, you know, just a car mechanic sees this, what does he see? You know, like how similar or it's, dissimilar? It's super similar. Yeah? Yeah, it's super similar. I mean, the difference is like, we have the fuel tank separate. I mean, even in automotive, you have fuel tanks separately. Uh, we have a firewall that we install. So the firewalls is just where we seat the, the engine. Okay. So, so any fluids, liquids. Stay uh, here. Yes, and then our thermostat as well. Um, so everything is kind of Is this kind of like apart. insulated somehow? Yes, it's 100% insulated prior to installing it on the aircraft. Okay. 
right? And then we have a 24-hour cure once we put it inside the aircraft, before we put it into it. So we do our prop uh, sub-assemblies here. Uh, we do a balance here on this fixture. So we get the prop blades. Yeah. We put it on this fixture here. Um, and then this is where we do the balance. Balance. Uh-huh. So we have to balance the props prior to installing uh, on an aircraft. Uh, well, uh, what's the importance of balancing a prop? So if you don't balance a prop correctly, you're going to have a prop sh vibrating like this, and it's going to scare the Jesus out of you, right? So you want to make sure it, it swings very well. It needs to be right? balanced. It needs to be balanced, <laughs> just like your tires. It needs to just go like Correct. So if you, don't, you buy new tires and don't balance the tires. Right. All shaky, right? All shaky. All of this looks very sophisticated. It's a pretty complicated production process. It has very specific standards because the life of the end user is at stake. I was curious as to why this facility was located in Tijuana and not elsewhere, maybe Asia or, or back in the States. The whole operation is here or do you have another plant somewhere else? We have another plant in Vacaville, California. Okay. Uh, we actually originated there and we moved to Mexico five years ago. Easier here or? Easier. Easier? Easier, yeah. So all of our composite manufacturing abilities, we brought in experts, we had lots of support uh, in order for us to start manufacturing our own composite parts. Uh, and in the first couple of years, we were able to do that. And from there, we started manufacturing our parts, painting all of our parts. Uh, and then we brought final assembly here two years ago. Uh, so now we're doing the final assembly here ourselves. It's like I'm originally from the States, so I've been here for- You started over there. I started over there. And I've been with Icon since 2014. So what was your reaction when like, Kevin, we have news for you. We're going to Tijuana. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, okay. Um, I've never been, let's try it. Wherever the job takes us, right? right? <laughs> Whatever can help the company, right? So. so we continued our tour and we started having that eureka moment where the jigsaw puzzle starts taking shape, right? But there were still some important steps left. This is the shell yeah. uh, of the fuselage. This is a very, very complex portion as well. So right now they're doing the fitment for the engine cows. So okay. the, the muffler fairings, the upper engine cow, they're doing a whole fit. So one, Are they gonna put the whole thing together or just a few parts here? Just a few parts because we're gonna drill holes to make sure holes are aligned, oh, okay. right? At what point do they, do they put all the mechanical parts? That's on the final side. The final side. This side over here is more focused on Cutting out the headlights, uh, we install the hood here. We do certain functionalities of the parts. For example, we, we drill holes, we bun this so guy. All these orifices, they're the ones that are drilling them. That's correct. This is where we close. So remember at the beginning, I showed you a skin. Yeah. So this is one skin, this is another skin. Oh. This is where we put, bun them together. So you got two shells. Okay. Now we're waiting for some additional parts, which is gonna be the spar. You're gonna and we're gonna go. Do you, do you glue them or what is it? What, yes, what? so it's a PTM and W, which is an adhesive. Yeah. It's like a glue. Okay. Uh, we come in and we glue each side and we, we squish one side and then we glue the next side and we squish the next side until you have one formed fuselage like that. If you see this area that's kind of sanded, uh -huh. so the glue would be here. Okay. And as the parts mate together, they kind of go over each other like oh, this. Oh, they overlap. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's this. It's not like this. Okay, no. gotcha. And, and that, that big old like chassis, the spot. You, know, you know, does that go here when they so put it together? This goes, that actually goes here. It, it's a several assemblies. Okay. So that main piece actually goes here. And then they put it and together. And then they put it together. Oh my goodness. So it all works together. It's like one systematically great machine. So these are, these are your laminated parts. You want to bond them together. This right. is where you do that. Right. And then is, is that like, like the, like the glue, the adhesive? The yes, that's the adhesive. Some industrial thing, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in certain parts, like we bring them from bun, from laminating, and we bun ribs in. We put in certain functionalities. The workforce that Kevin has in this plant is very flexible. Due to the cross training that they have, they don't miss a beat. And you mentioned that you have workshops where an employee doing something here, you don't want them to just know this. You'll move them to another part to learn the next. What are the benefits of that? It's made for attrition. It's also made for the flexibility of staff, right? The, because if you have a high attrition, which we do not, but we did once, uh, then you're gonna impact an area. 
So in order to, to stabilize a lot, you, you develop cross training. And Amazing. once you have cross training in place, you can utilize your staff how you need to. How you need to. Yeah. We were almost at the end of the production line, but there was still a very vital step left to do. Lastly, I'll take you guys through paint. This area is a little not controlled. There's no nice air conditioner or none of that stuff going on back here. Is it going to be hot? It's going to be a little different. <laughs> I won't say hot. A little different, it's huh? a little different. Okay. I'll remember that phrase. <laughs> what is it, bad? It's a little it's different. It's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody asks me in the future, it's pretty bad, right? I'm just going to go, it's a little different. Yeah, that's what you could say about the tacos. <laughs> like, eh, it's just a little different. Yeah. Food's pretty bad? Nah, it's a little different. A little different. <laughs> Was it really that bad? I mean, different? We'll see. Currently, we have quite a few parts in there that's curing. Uh, that's in primer. This is the primer phase. Right. How long will it take to cure? For primer, it takes two hours. Oh, OK. That's for, not bad. For top coat, we're running three hours to four hours for top coat. Uh, this is like our prep area, uh, where we sand it, getting everything ready to go in for top coat. So like now we have another wing that ate. This already primer? That's already primer. And cured. Yes. Those are our rotisseries. What rotisseries? We, so like we chicken, put, turkeys, and similar. Some of them similar? Okay. Similar. <laughs> but we put our aircraft in the rotisserie. <laughs> Does it turn? It turns. It doesn't rotate one all the way 360. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> it does go from side to side. You could rotisserie a dinosaur. That's yeah. correct. <laughs> so this is what we use to take the aircraft through body work, through painting, priming. It goes this is where the top coat you know, happens, mm -hmm. and then you heat it up? That's correct. So the painting's not done in the oven over there? Yeah, the final painting is done in there. Oh, it is? No painting done outside of that booth. So what happens is we take the fuselage skin, and we, we plug it in, basically. OK. So, and then we have the aircraft lifted. And then we do all of our body work and painting on this fixture. Wait a second, you said there's no painting outside of that place. There's no painting. So what about... But this whole fixture goes inside. Oh, the okay, whole gotcha. So now that I know how the plane was being built, I want to get my hands on it. But I need some quick instructions and a little bit of prepping. Okay, Kevin, from what I know is, is you put the sauce, right? You put uh -huh. a little bit of the sauce. Too much sauce. Too much sauce. Too oh. much sauce. Can I, can, can I still do it with it? Yes, just set the buffer flat. Don't pull the trigger. Just set it flat. Move it from left to right. Mm -hmm. Now pull the trigger. So although it was fun to do my part, it was obviously nothing compared to what these highly skilled workers do day to day, day in, day out. Specialized work done by many workers with specialized training. Is it a leisure plane? It is a leisure It is, plane. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, but it's... Is it something people can travel, or is it just if you're if you're in a lake, that's going to be your playground? Yeah. You can do both. I, I, we've flown different places, uh, our aircraft, uh, as far as you, flight You time. know that your distance. Correct. You know you know what your reach is. Correct. Correct. So if, if it's within that, you could you travel. Could. Gotcha. We were almost ready to see the final result of the final product. But first, all the electrical parts have to be assembled. So this is our final assembly oh area. My goodness. <laughs> so this is actually a finished, finished aircraft. Wow. Wow, this is so cool. I just have one question. Yep. Can you make it in black? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. We, we would love to, uh, but we don't want to heat up the yeah. adhesive. <laughs> well, I think it's something Bruce Wayne would ask you. That's basically. true. That's true. Batman. It would be a great feature. It would be fantastic. Okay, so the A5 doesn't come in my preferred Batman Black. It's an amazing piece of technology, though. It even has this remarkable feature, which uh, makes it possible to fold the wings for transporting. I mean, just look at this. They really thought of everything when making this plane. This is, gives us the ability to tow the aircraft and also use our trailer. So it retracts, we push it in, we seat it on the stud. Yeah, and, and just one person's doing it. And so one person. Just like that, That's huh? That's it. That's it. What, what kind of profile, capacity-wise, does the buyer need to have? You know, like a pilot's license to see, or so, do you, that's not your, that's not your thing. That's no, we actually train uh, 
for example, we'll train you. Really? Uh, before you accept the aircraft. Do you have a simulator here? We don't have a simulator. <laughs> but, Darn. Uh, <laughs> but Did, yeah. <laughs> we, we have some really good uh, pilots, really good sales teams okay. uh, that will get you in the aircraft, take you on a flight, uh, give Wait, you... Wait, so, so you'll train people who have never flown before? That's correct. You're kidding. After a quick introduction on the autopilot, I was ready to board the aircraft and take it for a spin myself. Just kidding, folks. I'm not taking this anywhere. I feel like a little boy's dream was coming true. This was an easy thing to geek out for. Gauges, buttons, lights, radars. I'm ready. Kevin, can I sit on the cockpit yes. of this? Yes, you can take a seat. <laughs> take a seat, young Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I don't want to mess it up, so tell me. So, I... step here. OK. Grab there. And grab step here. Step up. Yep. Woo! Is it a two-piloted, or...? or... Yes, you can either, uh, either side can be controlled. But do both need, do you need two pilots? Oh, no. no. Okay. No. no. Oh, man. This is the first time Rogue One, Rogue One, <laughs> Ghost Rider. This is Voodoo One, Mustang, <laughs> arriving, bearing two knots. <laughs> you got your horizon, mm -hmm. right? Airspeed, altitude. We're, oh, come on, come on. We, we need a gas station. Yeah. What's up with that? We're, gonna... <laughs> we're making a run for it. Strap in, Kevin. Where we're going, we don't need roads. That's true. <laughs> I prefer, you know, Cancun or something. Would be nice. Cancun it is, my friend. <laughs> Course plotted, ready to go. <laughs> and then we can fly with the windows out, because we do anyway. Do, do you do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, so wait a second. If you're doing with the windows open, what about any water splashing? Is this gear like okay? Yes, yeah, so we have a billage pump inside. So as soon as water comes in, we get an indicator. Okay. And then we just turn on the billage pump and it starts pumping out the water. So Similar none, none of these gauges short circuit or anything? No. Oh, wow. Because the way the aircraft is created, everything will go to the back. This has to be a fun thing to ride. There's probably things that it cannot do. One of which, I'm just guessing, you probably can't go, you know, flip over, right? Yeah. So no. there's, there's limitations that it has. That's correct. Right. But we do have an amazing safety feature, which is the parachute. No way! <laughs> you see, that alone so, would make me consider. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get in some trouble, you just pull the chute. <laughs> How rough of a landing is it with the parachute? So luckily, we haven't had a reason to use the parachute, uh, which is great for us. Right. Uh, but I'm assuming it will be very. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Because yeah. you guys have probably tested it. You know, they probably tested it. So. Yeah. You know, even with a parachute, you gotta, it's still a, a, an emergency situation. That's right? correct. I think mean, it'd be unreasonable to think you're gonna come down like a feather, you know, and just like, ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, there's gotta be a degree of a, you know, a little bit of a mm -hmm. bomb for it. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. But yeah, if they tested it, I imagine it's safe enough. Oh, oh, I'm gonna call you guys. You know what? The landing wasn't like. <laughs> The landing wasn't smooth, but it, was, ah, it, is it, it wasn't like landing on a pillow, you know. <laughs> no, no, I'm alive, and thank you yes. for putting that feature. Yes. Yes. Before coming to this incredible facility, I didn't even know this type of aircraft existed. Now I go home knowing that engineers have come a long way, and that we still haven't reached our maximum capacity. The Icon A5 amazed me, and if it didn't cost more than a single family home in Texas, I considered purchasing one for myself as scared as I am of flying. Pretty cool thing they got going. Pretty good operation you got going here, my dude. Thank you. Let's see if we, can you start the propeller now? So <laughs> flaps are up, flaps. Right, flaps right. are good. Landing gear down. <laughs> so after taking a tour of this factory for big boy toys and learning how the composite manufacturing process works, we look forward to taking flight on more adventures the next time we cross south. November 557 Bravo Alpha, cleared for takeoff. Like to know more about the places you've just seen? Maps, videos, podcasts, and more at crossingsouth.com. We also do Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.